Um, but the people that I spoke to said exactly the same thing. I mean, when they were asked, were you coerced into voting? You know, one of the biggest memes in the West is they were, they, they were voting at gunpoint. Well, right. no, the gunpoint is coming from Western Ukraine. It's coming from Kiev. It's coming from the Ukrainian ultranationalists who have been bombing them, torturing them, detaining them, executing them, sniping them, putting them on kill lists for eight, for eight years, including 300 children on that kill list, yeah. right? And that kill list is a NATO kill list. It's mm -hmm. backed by the US. There mm -hmm. are actual US citizens, CIA operatives behind that kill list. So it's not a Ukrainian kill list. That's just the cover story for it. It's backed by NATO. You know, I contacted a journalist about, about this. I won't say who it is publicly, but they mm -hmm. countered with, well, there's no proof this kill list um, is linked to Westerners or um, there's no, there's not, it's been covered in such a sloppy way. So my question, I guess, back to that journalist is it's not being covered at all. So what are you talking about? And um, first of all, and what would you say to some, to a Western journalist stating that, that, that it's, um, that it's, there's no definitive proof that it's um, linked to Westerners or, or such things. Um, because, you know, I, I disagree with that, but I yeah, want to hear. I know. Yeah, no, I mean, I would recommend that they go and read George Eliasson's work from 2015. George Eliasson is yes. an American citizen, an American journalist on the ground in Ukraine for more mm -hmm. than 10 years. So he was there before 2014. Um, he's living in the Donbass area. He has a, a whole heap of experiences of um, cruelty and atrocities committed by the Ukrainian forces against the people of Donbass. He's written about um, a guy called Joel Harding, who has a background in uh, special forces in the States, connections to the Pentagon, to CIA, who effectively pre-2015 established the cyber war um, rooms, if you like, in Ukraine. And he is responsible for the cyber warfare against the people of Donbass and against anyone that, that stands in solidarity with those people, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that is all, um, it's, it's all been notated by George in his articles. So I recommend going to his articles of 2015, I can send you the links. Right. And there you will see the first footprint of the West, of NATO, on these kind of kill lists. There's another kill list, by the way, in the UK called Molfar Global, which was established in the UK. It's actually listed at Companies House in the UK. And it effectively has a very similar orc, you know, the, the, the derogatory term they use to describe Russians. Um, it has an orc list where it, it lists with photo and bio of all the people that they consider should be hunted down um, in Ukrainian territory, right? So it's not as if the Myrotvorets list is the only one out there, but it's mm -hmm. certainly the first. I mean, it was established way back in 2014, 2015, right? It has more than 300 children on that list. And journalists um, have died on that list, and they yeah. put a horrible um, message across <laughs> And it's Absolutely. And even Eva, because I remember when Louise Mensch, um, mm -hmm. a former British MP, actually mm -hmm. doxed her on Twitter to the special forces of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And two days later, or even one day later, her hotel, the same hotel that Wyatt was at, by the way, was mm -hmm. bombed um, in Donetsk. And that's not a coincidence. No, no way that's a coincidence. And any journalist who is denying the existence of this kill list is complicit in war crimes, in my opinion. There you have it. And well said. And, you know, I, I, I was looking before you came on today just to pull one Western media story about it. And the only thing I could find was the one I've already shown my audience, which was the NBC. And they didn't even talk about it, really. They, they did a hit piece on Ava Bartlett. It was NBC. Mm -hmm. And, they, yeah. and instead of talking about her being on the hit list and in danger, 
they literally just did a terrible, you know, dissemination yeah. of, of. I mean, of, but but this so, is what they do. Yeah. So, um, I wanted to ask you further on that. Are you you're on that kill list as well as um, the next guest that we have coming on in a few few minutes, uh, Wyatt Reed? Mm. But what has have you gotten any support, safety, or concerns from your home country government or any any kind of? <laughs> no. no, 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 no. I mean, the last time I went back to the UK, I was detained as a Russian agent for six hours and had my phones wiped. So I think the chances now of my country doing anything other than supporting the kill list against me and supporting any sanctions against me, as they did against um, Graham Phillips, of course, mm -hmm. you know, who's, who's risking his life in the Donbass reporting on the situation there. And the British government, without any legal process, has sanctioned him and frozen his assets in the UK. We are living in such a lawless society right now, where the predator class in the West is effectively just quite happy to put us on an assassination list. It's quite happy if we're killed. It's quite happy if we're in prison like Julian Assange. It's quite happy if we're censored and arrested or detained or prevented right. from ever coming home again. You know, this is what they want. They want us silenced. They want us in, in fear as, as yeah. well. Fear and silence. Um, because, you know, you take away safety and connection and you take away everything from a human being, mm. right? That's, yeah. so that's yeah. the tactic. Um,